I must say, it's a beautiful feeling. Because I play from my heart. And that is where all the energy is in my heart. So while I'm playing, I feel and I know I am connected with my roots and my culture. So I have to rejoice because after all of what my ancestors have done for me and the generation, I have to rejoice because they are paved the way for me. Drumming at the age of seven. But before I go far, I never really liked drumming. But my brother Kurt, he's the man, he's the driving force behind my drumming skills and my techniques and my success right now at this point in time. I believe that's a gift from God because he and my big brother Jomo started to play on tinny cups with sticks. So my daddy said like, oh, those guys are really good. And from that day he bought two drums for them and that's how he started to play the drums from there. No formal training at all and that is us. That is an awesome gift. I, I never wanted a drum. <laughs> I don't want to drum. I just wanted to be a kid, run around, play in the trench, play in the rain, play football. Drum was never my thing, but all my other brothers, they were always involved in the drums. So one day, I was just, um, I was just chilling with my friends them at that point, and my brother said, "You know what, Orlando, you have to learn to play the drums." And so he just called me and my little brother Carl, and he said, "You know what?" Started, this is the basic. You guys got to learn the basic of learning how to play the basic on the drums. So we started from there. And I had two left hands. Although I have a right and a left, I had two left hands. I still have it up, up to this day. It's um, a Congo drum. A Congo. The Congo drum is right in there in my drumming school right now. That's the first drum I started to play on. Bigger than me, short me. Under the drum, you can barely see my face. And that is the drum that I started on. And that was my brother's current first drum that he got. So all of that made me not interested in playing the drum. So constantly, my brother keeps saying, Orlando, you gotta learn to play, you gotta learn to play the drum. So he would, on a daily basis, would call us in and say, you know what, while he's playing, he would say, this is bass, this is tone, this is um, semi-bass, and he goes on like that. And then one day, we had, a t no, we had a church, so that made me even more involved in playing. That really started me out, actually. So, church day, Kurt said, you know what? You gotta play the drums. And I was so scared, I was really scared because I didn't know if I was gonna do good or bad. So from that day, I started and I was, I was okay. Not good at all. I was, I was scared at first. I was definitely scared at first, but, um, I got over it because I did I did okay. I did okay. And from that day I keep playing, playing. I wish my brother car was always better than me. Which really drive me crazy. <laughs> it, it, it really drive me crazy because he's smaller than me, he's not supposed to know more than me and do better than me. That's my thinking, right? But everybody's gifted differently. So I always said, you know what? I'm gonna be the best. My neighborhood that I grew up in, we always played drums. My brothers always played drums and we always had church. So it wasn't a new thing to the neighborhood. I was born in London. All 11 of us, this is where it all started. We started one little room and then it expanded. One of the hardest thing and the, well, the smartest thing I've done with my career, actually, um, branching off. It really didn't come as a branch out because the Prima Brothers, because that's the name of my, our drumming group, Prima Brothers, it wasn't really a branch off, I just opened a new branch. Yes, I had a vision and I created my own, my own drumming school. That's what I did, actually. Because there wasn't any drumming school that I knew of in Guyana. So I said, you know what? I wanted to give back to the get back to the community, I want to get back to my end. So I can't have all this talent and waste it on nothing because there's so many master drums that passed and gone. They haven't done much, I think personally, for young 
drummers to come up and to receive that greatness that they have had. So I said, you know what? I, I went to my mom. I said, Mom, you know what? My talents, I want to give back. It's time for me to give back. I have, I have accomplished so much, and it's time for me to give back. So I said, you know what, Mom? I already got the name for the drum school. So I'm just going to put it together, and I'm going to open up the first drum school in Diana. first interview I did was <laughs> by Stabber News. It was called Create the Magic of the Drums. So I took that into consideration, the Magic of the Drums. And then another time I was playing at a, a service, Thanksgiving service, and I was in the room and I was going, I was going, and my head was rocking. I was having a good thoughts, so like I always do. So this Archbishop come up to me and said, you know what? He shook my hands. I think that was the first time he saw me play. He shook my hands and said, you know what, you have magic on the drums. Wow. Really magic on the drums. Magic on the drums. And then I come to him and said, you know what, magic fingers from the school. And from that day, that was my name. I call it the magic fingers. Until this day. Magic. M-A-J-E-K-M and M-A-G-I-C. Two different. A lot of people ask the question, M-A-G-I-C. I said, you know what? I never want to be like everybody else. I want to be different. So the name just speaks for itself. Me as a person, I am different from every single guy. This is my first drum, my second drum actually, but I I named my first drum that I have number one, the number one drum, because that is the drum that made me who I am today. Yes, Magic Fingers. Well, you know, Betsy is like an old car that we had for such a long time, but it's still there and it's still going. So that is just a name we just give to Betsy that because it's there, it's still working, it's still sounding good. It's Something better than new drums that is coming right now. When my hands are going in and out, and I am moving up and down, right? That's what I'm gonna do. Well, basically, it's my techniques and my style and my swag. Because if I just play it like this, nobody ain't gonna wanna see me. I'm already good looking. So, with my good looks, I have to do something even a little more to catch the people's the people eyes, right? My rhythms are already sweet and beautiful. So when I start to play and I enjoy and I'm feeling the vibes and I start to move my hands, my techniques, they have to work because if I do, da, 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 it's like, wow, what is that? And everybody want to follow me. They want to copy my style, which is okay because I know I'm leaving a legacy, definitely. <laughs> Tunje, that was a great man, grandmaster on the drums. I look up to him. 
I respect his work. And one day I will be bigger and better than him. <laughs> With hard work, because he has paved the way for a lot of drummers out of Africa. So I look up to him because he's one of the persons that take African drumming, drumming to the United States of America and he, and he made a big impact. So I want to make a big impact. But first I want to start at home and then I will definitely branch out. But I teach my students, play from your heart. And when it comes naturally, nobody can touch you. Unstoppable, you're unstoppable. And that's how I play, from the heart. At this point in my life, I know the drums were always in me, was always in me, because of how I played it at this point in time in my life. I say brown skin, yeah, stay home and mine, baby. Brown skin, yeah, stay home and mine, baby. Cause I'm going away on a sailing boat. And if I don't come back, so where did I, baby? <laughs> it is just, the rhythm with it is just lovely. So I like to sing that one. It's not nothing in particular, right? <laughs> I just want you guys to know that. <laughs> but I just love that song. I love it. Uh, how I learned all the songs. Growing up with my brother, like I said, Kurt, Prima Brothers, we have done a lot. And like I said, it come naturally. It come naturally. I do have a book with 104 songs of Guyana, and I know a lot. Definitely. When I get a chance, I try to sing some of them that I don't know. So I, there's all, I'm always learning. I'm always learning. I'll tell you at this present time, I, ca I carry on quicker from starting to ending. That's what I do now. Last year, December 16th, it was 23 John Norton Street, and then we went to Michael. Yes. But what happened? When we reached at the, um, the bride's house, we came out and then we walked in a nice long procession. They had about 250 persons at the club. It was filled with, with young people. The older folks came out and they did their stuff. I was like shocked. I was like playing and I was like, wow. I really have to get more in tune with this culture, with the culture, definitely. Because I really want to master the Kwekwe. I, I really want to master That is one of the things that I'm focusing on too, mastering how to carry on a Kwekwe from day one, from starting to end. Brown skin, yeah, stay home and mine, baby. Cause I'm going away on a sailing boat And if I don't come back, so where did I, baby? There's always room for learning. There's always room. And I am open to anybody. I can learn from the smallest kid. So if there's a workshop over there, I will, I will definitely go. Because maybe I might not play my tones correctly. I might not play my bass correctly. But that person know how to do it. So I can learn a few things from there. 2009, I approached the music festival because a great woman called me and said, Erlan, you know what, they have the music festival, you should go up. And I went to them and they said, you know what, we don't have any space for drumming. I said, wow, okay, they only do violin, piano, and all the other instruments. And in 2011, I got a call, Mr. Primo. How are you? This is Miss Jor. I said, from where? Music festival. You know what we have done for you? We have incorporated drumming into the festival for the first time. And it's because of you. I was like, wow. You know, I had to spread the word. I told everybody it's because of me. They did such because she told me it's because of me. <laughs> so it was a great feeling at that point. So I get my friends, I call them and said, we have a drumming competition. You guys, let's go. It's, it's going to be fun. So we go, all of us went. 
it was at the National Culture Center. That's where it was held. So we went there. I think it was 11 of us. And I took the 11. It was only one. I brought first in the first competition. So I have my score sheet I can show you. I aced all 10 categories, five categories technique, rhythm, style. I can't remember the other two, but I aced all of them. 20 out of 20. We didn't do any songs. Any song was just like solo drum. And it was dynamic. Definitely. That was just for the first run where I brought first. And then out of all, I think it was over 50 persons performed in the festival. I won the overall chap over all of them, which was even a more amazing feeling, definitely. So I came out on top of that, and that was a really great feeling. So that boosted me up to do more into drumming. And then in 2013, the festival came again, and I'm sorry to say, I'm happy to say, that I repeated myself. Number one, brought the bigger, bigger drummers came out for me. But you know, when you're true to yourself, when you play from your heart, like I said before, you're unstoppable. And that's what I showed them. Well, my senior drummers, they're always copying my style. That is one thing. And what I told them, I said, listen to me. It's quite all right to copy my style. But that's the thing, you're not, you're not going to be better than me like that, right? You have to copy my style and put a little twist to it. Then you can definitely be better than me because that's what I do. I learn every day from my students, from the youngest one to the oldest one. Because what I do, I took, take a little piece from what they do and add it to my set. And that's how I am always the best, definitely. I'm not, I, that, this is not self-praise saying that I'm the best. This is what is out here. That is what makes me work even harder, harder every day because I know they're coming. They're coming, they're hungry, and they're saying that, sir, that we, we're coming to get you. They're doing stuff that I is like, I'm like, wow, you never know to do that. How you did that? And just like, so I'm like, I'm always on top of my game. I always have to do something different because, like I said, if they try to teeth a little thing from me, I have to get something better. Because they get, okay, if we got a competition to do it before me, it's like, oh, you're just like, we already heard that. What are you coming with? So like, I have to come with something better. So I see great potential in my students, definitely. Great, great potential, especially the, the advanced class. Oh my God, I am really happy. They make me cry when they play, definitely. From, because where they came from to where they are at this point, I know I've done a lot of work with them, and they are really, they're really appreciative of what I've done for them. And everybody, they want to be the best. So they want to get involved. They want to know their culture. There's so many kids out there, wanna, they're dying to know their culture, but they don't have anywhere to go. But 
that is what we are doing in the Magic Phoenix Drumming School, opening ways and avenues for the young kids to come. And knowing that they want to stay connected to the culture is just a great feeling for me because I have a saying, if you don't know where you came from, you will never know where you're going. And that is one of the mottos that I live by, definitely. You have to remember where you came from. So I am happy to know that young people are so interested in the culture and I will try my best and continue doing my best to keep it alive and keep them coming and open the school to so much more.